So 5G is pretty bloody great, right? Because it means that even in the busiest places like football stadiums and that enormous queue to get out of the country, you can expect a strong enough connection to endlessly browse TikTok rather than actually being forced to engage in conversation with other humans like your family. And if 5G connectivity is a priority for you, well, don't worry about spunking out sackloads of cash on the latest flagship phones because even most budget-friendly blowers these days come with that 5G support built in. So here's my pick of the best options under 400 pounds, including quite a few smartphones under 300 pounds and even a couple under 200 quid if you've spent your last scrap of cash on an overpriced pint down your local. Seriously, it's almost a tenner for a warm glass of ale down my local right now. And that's why I've swapped to Class A drugs. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do box subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now if you've got yourself a spare 350 quid knocking about, I highly recommend Google's Pixel 6a, which sports the same Tensor chipset as last year's flagship Pixels, complete with a sexier bit of 5G modem action. It is absolutely lovable in every way, from the dinky form factor to the dependable battery life and that excellent camera tech. Everyday snaps from this thing look ruddy wonderful, with particularly impressive results in HDR and low light situations. Gamers won't be too satisfied by the less than stable frame rate in games like Genshin Impact, but that OLED screen is a stunner while the stock Android experience is very much enjoyable, as is the dinky design which makes the Pixel 6a extremely pocket friendly. And if you want to know more, I've done you a full unboxing and early review, I've compared it side by side with the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro, I've done an in-depth camera review, all kinds of shenanigans, so go consume my precious. One of the best alternatives to the Pixel 6a is the rather unique Nothing Phone 1, which is dazzling in all kinds of different ways, but mostly because its arse lights up like a firefly on all of the crack. Yes, all of the headlines are focused on that flash and disco bollocks known as the glyph lighting. It is basically just a glorified notifications light though. And you'll find if you dive on beneath the literally very flashy exterior, you'll find a serious competitor to that Google Pixel 6 action. Performance is much better here compared with the Pixel 6a for gaming, while you once again have a gorgeous OLED display, this time with faster refresh. That camera tech is pretty bloody good too, coming close to the Pixel a lot of the time and rarely chucking up a bad looking pick. And you've even got support for wireless charging, something that's missing from Google's mid-range Pixel. The Nothing launcher does tweak the aesthetics with a too cool for school dot matrix design and the less said about those wallpapers and ringtones, the better. But otherwise, this is stock Android through and through with three years of guaranteed Android OS updates and four years of security support. Gotta say, when I first reviewed the Nothing Phone 1, the battery life was pretty cack and the face recognition worked about as well as a chocolate dildo. But thankfully, updates have sorted out these problems, so now it is one of the better Pixel rivals out there. Now, another one of the best budget 5G smartphones right now that launched in early 2022 is Xiaomi's Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. This is a proper whopper at a shade under 6.7 inches, but you've once again got a gorgeous AMOLED screen and even a stereo speaker setup. The Redmi can handle a proper afternoon long gaming session on quite demanding Android titles, thanks to that Snapdragon 695 SoC with 5G support for online action on the likes of Call of Duty. And Xiaomi also chucks in a decent set of tools for blocking notifications and recording your mad skills, or in my case, an endless stream of death and failure. So media fans and gamers should absolutely ruzzy love the Redmi Note 11 Pro, especially as the battery life is so good you can stream movies, music, whatever you fancy for hours and hours and hours without running out of juice. Xiaomi's blowers come packing the MIUI launcher, which resembles stock Android in many ways, but with a lot of bonus extras tossed in, such as that gaming mode what I was just banging on about. However, bear in mind that Xiaomi can be quite slow compared with a lot of rivals when it comes to the system and the software updates, mostly because they've got so many freaking phones out, so don't expect very timely updates over the air. If you can live with that, there's a lot to love here, including a headphone jack, way, and expandable storage. For a bit more scratch, you can bag yourself the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus, which boasts faster charging, but the battery capacity has shrunk a little to make that possible. Camera tech and the performance are pretty similar, and yet you'll find quite a few other little differences between the Pro and the Pro Plus once you scratch beneath the surface. If you want to know more, don't worry, I've got you covered. I've done you a full side-by-side -side comparison with the Redmi Note 11 Pro and that Pro Plus model, as well as the regular Redmi Note 11, which is a bit dinkier but doesn't have 5G support. Just bear in mind that the Redmi Note 12 phones have already launched over in China and should be coming to the UK in a few months' time with any luck. 
So you may want to hang on just in case, but I've done a video about the Redmi Note 12 phones, which hopefully I'll remember to put a clicky link thing to up here. Uh, apologies if I don't, because frankly, usually I've had a skin full by the time I get around to the editing bit. Alternatively, if you are tempted by a Xiaomi blower, but you've got a little bit less cash to spunk out on your new blower, well, definitely check out the Xiaomi 11 Lite 5G NE. It's a wee bit smaller at 6.55 inches, but boasts a more premium Gorilla Glass design. You've got Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus support on the premium style AMOLED panel, while the 64 meg primary camera sensor offers similar results to the 108 meg shooter on the Redmi Note 11 Pro. Now another brand well worth checking out when it comes to great value budget smartphones is Poco and one of their best right now is this here Poco F4. This all glass blower looks pretty smart as long as you keep that arse end clean while the other side boasts a mighty AMOLED screen that is both bright and bold. Certainly a magnificent means to take in a depraved tentacle heavy anime or whatever other entertainment you happen to be into. You've got a powerful if slightly uneven stereo speaker setup with Dolby Atmos tuning. Although sadly no headphone jack which is a bit of an arse but pretty much standard these days. And because Poco used to be part of the Xiaomi Fold you still get Xiaomi's MIUI launcher slapped on there complete with all of the bonus extras including that excellent gaming mode. And if you are a gamer you'll be well served by that powerful Snapdragon 870 chipset. The Poco F4 can kick the arse of any game out there even the memory scoffing Genshin Impact. No complaints on the battery front, while the 64 meg primary camera sensor can capture good looking pics and home movies with little fuss, as long as the lighting isn't cack. And if you happen to spy this smartphone's predecessor, the Poco F3 going on the cheap, well I'd be well tempted to snaffle it up. You see it's very similar to the Poco F4 in many respects, including the same beefy performance and I think I actually prefer the design of the F3. Sorry mate. And definitely don't sleep on the Poco X4 Pro either. This shiny handset is basically a rebranded Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro which we already covered in this roundup and occasionally one or both of them will be on sale. So if you are tempted by a Redmi Note 11 Pro, well definitely keep tabs on both of them and if you happen to see one of them suddenly drop, well snatch it right up. And if your available funds can't quite stretch as far as those Pocos what I was just chatting about, well no worries. Another budget happy blower that rocks some very good specs indeed for a price that's extremely dangerous to your pant lining is the excellent Poco M4 Pro 5G. This 5G ready phone sports a 6.6 inch Full HD display, stereo speakers of sorts, smooth everyday performance driven by a Dimensity 810 chipset and a 5000mAh battery that will keep you going till you're all tucked up with Teddy. And the best part of the Poco M4 Pro 5G is possibly the way it doesn't actually have a macro lens or pointless optical wankery thrust onto the deceptively large camera chassis. You've got a 50 meg primary camera sensor that is typically budget and an ultra wide angle shooter and that's your ruddy lot. Keeping it simple, nice and streamlined. And yeah, photo quality is slightly dubious but that's no different to most of the cheapy handsets around the Poco M4 Pro's price point. Now another cracking source of affordable budget 5G smartphones right now is Motorola. In fact, they pump out so many of them that choosing between them all can be a pretty laborious task. One option is the fresh and tasty Moto G82 for under 300 quid, which delivers some proper lush mid-range specs like a slick 120Hz AMOLED screen, a respectable 50 meg primary snapper with optical image stabilization and a whopping great 5000mAh battery. And Moto Blowers serve up a lovely stock version of Android as well with just a few extra bonus bits chucked on top which are actually genuinely good like some excellent gesture support and a proper decent gaming mode that is definitely a step up from the pixels. Just be warned that like Xiaomi unfortunately that update schedule isn't particularly strong so you might not necessarily get more than just the one or maybe two at a stretch Android OS updates and the security updates might not trickle through quite as quickly as you'd like. And if your budget won't quite stretch as far as the Moto G82, well Motorola also just spaffed out the Moto G62 which once again offers up those 5G smarts this time for under 200 quid. This plastic slab boasts water repellent design so it gets splashed without exploding and you've got all the usual features including NFC, a headphone jack and micro SD support. Plus of course you've got all the Motorola's bonus bits chucked on here like the dedicated gaming mode and the excellent karate double chop to turn on the torch feature which I bloody love. The 6.5 inch IPS screen ain't nothing special but it does support 120Hz refresh while the Snapdragon 480 Plus chipset is good enough for your everyday shenanigans and some light gaming while also offering 5G support, Natch. 
The 5000 mAh battery keeps you going all day too, no matter what you're up to. And the camera may struggle in testing conditions, but it does pack in Motorola's AI smarts to help you capture the best pics possible. And another good 5G option if your budget is under 400 quid is Samsung's Galaxy A53 5G, which proves that Sami can pump out a decent mid-ranger as well as an uber expensive flagship, although there is one killer flaw with this thing. The plastic design is pretty straightforward, but I do love the IP67 dust and water resistance, same as the Pixel 6a, while the bright colours help to inject a bit of excitement. And Samsung fans will of course enjoy the action-packed One UI experience which chucks in all the same tools and features pretty much as you would find on those more expensive S22 flagship smartphones. And in further good news, Sami has also promised A53 owners that they will get several years of OS and security updates to keep the phone feeling fresh. The 6.5 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED screen gets a thumbs up, chucking out sharp Full HD Plus images complete with Samsung's trademark colours that positively pop. It's definitely a good in for your Netflix in, your Disney Plus in, all of that, despite the lack of HDR streaming support. You've also got microSD memory card support stuffed in here, but unfortunately Samsung did strip out the headphone jack for this generation because it was on the A52s 5G, so that's really bloody annoying. The A53 may take a while to charge, but the battery life is solid, and that feature-packed camera is respectable if not quite brilliant, often struggling with moving subjects or tougher lighting conditions. The video results are definitely a step down from the flagships, not really too surprising. Unfortunately, the one massive flaw is Samsung's use of an Exynos chipset, leading to rather juddery performance no matter what you're up to, and certainly more demanding games like Genshin Impact are best left well alone. As long as you don't mind those jitters, the A53 is a perfectly good handset, but if you do happen to spy the A52s 5G on offer anyway, I'd say maybe grab that one instead because the performance was a bit smoother and of course it had that headphone jack. Now if you count yourself as a demanding user after an all-round excellent 5G ready phone on a strict-ish budget, the Realme 9 Pro Plus should satisfy. One of the highlights here is the camera using that ever popular 50 meg Sony IMX766 sensor with optical image stabilization built right in. But believe me, this phone is much more than just a big dick waving bag of optics. You've also got a gorgeous Super AMOLED screen and MediaTek's Dimensity 920 smarts providing smooth performance. Games like PUBG, Call of Duty and other popular titles play perfectly with a smooth frame rate on higher details although the likes of Genshin Impact do struggle when pushed. Battery life also gets a proper big thumbs up. I never once ran dry, even with intensive screen on time, while a 60 watt fast charge support means you're refilled in no time at all. For less cash than the Realme 9 Pro Plus, you can grab yourself the Realme 9 Pro 5G. And this is powered by the Snapdragon 695 instead, which is still a very capable chipset, can basically do whatever you want. However, that gorgeous AMOLED panel on the Pro Plus version has been ripped right out and replaced with a pretty bog standard IPS panel. You also lose the fast battery charging and the camera tech isn't quite as good. Another reliable provider of affordable 5G phones is OnePlus and their best option is the OnePlus Nord 2T, their self-proclaimed flagship killer. This blower is quite dinky compared with many rivals besides the Pixel 6e of course and it is powered by the beefy Dimensity 1300 so online ultraviolence is a thing of glory and wonder. And that battery tech is pretty bloody respectable as well it's strong enough to get you through a full intensive day no worries and when it is finally drained you've got super fast 80 watt charging support. That 6.43 inch OLED screen is a stunner, boasting gorgeous contrast and HDR10 plus support, plus a smooth 90Hz finish. And you got yourself the same 50 meg Sony IMX766 camera sensor as the Realme 9 Pro Plus, and while not infallible, this once again does a bang up job capturing good looking pics in quite testing conditions. And you got OnePlus as usual Oxygen OS launchers slapped on there, with the guarantee of at least a couple of years of software support. And if you're a bit too skint for that, but you like the sound of the OnePlus Nord, they've also pumped out a Core Edition model, the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G. The Core Edition model rocks a 64 meg Omnivision camera sensor, and OnePlus reckons that the Dimensity 900 chipset can process images for improved photo quality. This camera is fine for everyday shenanigans, although in lower light you will definitely want to make full use of the night mode to get brighter results. And as for performance, the Dimensity can cope with anything you chuck its way, except for the most demanding Android games like Genshin Impact. You're definitely better off with the likes of Call of Duty. And the rest of the specs are pretty solid too. 
That 6.43 inch AMOLED screen is bright and poppy, while the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G also serves up expandable storage and a headphone jack, plus that same satisfying Oxygen OS experience. The Nokia G60 5G is another respectable everyday smartphone for just 300 quid, with the added bonus that it's mostly constructed from recycled materials, so making one doesn't tit up the planet as much as other phones. And with quite a few years of OS and security updates guaranteed as well, hopefully you won't have to hoi it in the bin and replace it with another one in double quick time. The Nokia G60 is powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 695, so once again this phone breezes through most tasks with a spring in its step and doesn't disintegrate if you try playing games either. That 6.58 inch screen is mere IPS tech sadly, but it's not a bad panel, still quite poppy, if not quite as bright as I would have liked. Battery life is as good as most of the phones in this best budget roundup where you get plenty of extra perks like expandable storage and an actual headphone jack. And while the Nokia G65 G isn't a patch on the Pixel and quite a few others here for photography, it's still fine as long as the lighting isn't being a proper dick. Strong contrast and dim conditions are not this phone's friend. And deep breath, that is my roundup of the best budget-friendly 5G smartphones you can bag yourself right now. At least that I've personally tested and reviewed. But what about you guys? Have you got any massive fan favourites of your own? Definitely clue me in in the comments below. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everybody. Love you.